What's up everyone, I'm Dags in Darkness, back again to talk to you guys about some stuff. I've got some uh, footage from the skirmish I went to last week, so it's just a matter of time just editing it all. Um, and yeah, I'll hopefully get some stuff up for you guys to see. And then I've got a skirmish coming up next week, and I'm going to film that, so, you know, more footage. Really getting around to it. Got a proper GoPro, really excited, you know, seems really good. So yeah, so that's, that's good, you know. Uh, I want to talk about what the differences between a pro player and a noob are and how you can kind of tell at a skirmish when you look at them. So, number one, generally, and this is something you can't even see, this is just something that happens. So, a pro player will charge, hydrate, you know, they'll have everything sorted. They'll have their kit bag sorted. So, my kit bag already is sorted for my skirmish next Sunday. And it's literally Friday now. So I've got essentially around a whole week between. So I've already got my bag sorted. I've got my gel balls hydrated. I've got all my batteries charged. And the sheer purpose for that is that way I know everything's done. So all I've got to do is literally just grab one of my blasters, stick it in the bag, stick that blaster in that bag, put all my gear out, and then grab all my gear and pretty much leave. So that's the most important thing a pro player will do. They'll have everything sorted out like at least three days beforehand so that they can just grab everything and go. There's no, oh, did I charge the batteries? Did I, did, did I put this in the bag? Oh, where did I put this? And then, you know, there's kerfuffle. There's none of that. A pro player will always know when his shit is, where his shit is, and is it already sorted out. So that's the best pro tip move I can give you. Have your shit sorted already. The second pro tip move, when you get to a skirmish, don't be socializing for like forever. Walk up, say hello, if there's new people, you know, like nod and shit, but get your stuff sorted. So if you need to put batteries in your blasters, like everyone does, put your batteries, batteries in, you know, get your magazines out, fill up your magazines from the blasters you're going to be using, you know, until you take it for the next lunch, uh, an official lunch break, you're going to be only coming over to quickly grab water, and uh, refill your magazines. So have all your magazines full, you know, get all your batteries in for the blasters you're going to use. That's simple fact. Just do that. Don't stand there socializing because you've got that one guy that stands there socializing. Then they realize they don't have all the stuff they need and then they've got to go back to their car. They've got to put the battery in. They've realized they didn't fill up all their magazines and then you're waiting on that guy to start a game. The next thing is, before you even go generally on the field for a game, make sure if you have a prime mag, just give it... Two seconds, one, two, you know, prime the mag, then give it a shoot. Now, I, the reason I say just give it two seconds is because it should be more than enough to prime the magazine, especially if it's an MP5 mag. Um, don't hold it forever, just hold it for a little bit, quick little time, give it a shoot, see if it's feeding. That way, when you go out in the field, you know your blast is feeding. Some people would prime the mag or not even worry about priming at all, so then when they engage in combat, the first, like, maybe 10 to 12 shots they think they're going to shoot is it just priming? And it's like, you're not even hitting anyone. You could have got a kill. You're the one that gets hit. You know, make sure your shit is sorted before you even walk out. Make sure your blast is uh, feeding properly. Make sure your battery is in, everything is in. The next noob move I see is people, if they, they might have two PMAX. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It is a price point for people if they're going to invest Generally, I mean, for the type, the price of two PMAGs, if they have like, um, if they generally have an extra PMAG, the difference between a PMAG and a SCD drum mag is like $20. This is like $20 and a drum mag is like 40 bucks. So I would rather just invest in a, um, a drum mag and not buy a PMAG. Just for like small skirmish sake. Like when you get into like more hardcore, like realistic skirmishes, you really want PMAGs. It's, it's just a better feel reloading. But yeah, just... Yeah, because I see like a couple of guys, they'll have one magazine or two magazines and they'll leave their bottle of gels at the end of the spawn point. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just there's so many things that go wrong. They sit in the sun, they can dehydrate, especially if it's really sunny, they can get knocked over. And sometimes I've seen people forget them and we've grabbed up bottles and gone, oh, you know, who left the bottle here? You know, and you don't want to forget your gels and, you know, miss like a 1.25 litre bottle. So maybe just invest in a drum mag, it's not too difficult, it's something everyone can do. It's not like, you know, it's going crazy out of your way to do so. Um, the next thing is practice uh, reloading your blasters. 
So I'm still fairly new with uh, loading the MP5, but it's about getting in the rhythm of it and just learning to do smooth reloads. Because it's got this notching point here where it has to pull that back, um, and you have to be very specific on how you actually, um, how the magazine takes. See how it's like, like it was rejecting it a bit there? You gotta get in the routine of practicing the reload. So I've been practicing it, so even though I've got the one drum mag, when I uh, invest in a second drum mag or a couple of stick mags, it's gonna be quite easy just to change them over really quickly. Same way if you, to, if you were to um, have P mags. If you say running a belt with like six P mags, stick them down, say you're right handed, so you're blasting the right hand, face them this way down. The reason why I say that is when you pull it out, when you've got it in your hand, it's already going to go into the blaster like so. Don't have it facing, you know, odd ways or sticking up and then you go pull it up and switch it around and, you know, shove it in. Have it facing the correct way. Because if you have it like that and you pull it out, it's all about feeding it properly, you know. You can do it generally both ways. It's not too difficult. But it's just about minimalizing the amount of, like, weird hand movements you go. So if it sits like this, you can pull out, feed in, even like the other way. You know, you can do it both ways quite easy. It's just, a, like, mainly don't have them sitting like this. This is the worst thing you can do. Because then, one, it's harder to actually pull out because they've got the lip at the bottom, small little lip. And two, it's just a bit more, like, jiggling you have to do. And, yeah, just try and have them facing the way that you want to transition them in properly. And it's to do with your hand. And once you get comfortable with it and you, you try it out a couple times, you understand exactly what I mean. So that's kind of the noob slash pro things to do. Obviously, making sure your bag and kit is set up like a couple of days beforehand, batteries charged, balls hydrated. Second thing, um, making sure your batteries in your blaster and your blaster is feeding. Third thing is getting used to your blaster when the magazine's empty, you know, if you're using P mags or stick mags. Um, and making sure, you know, you're just used to reloading it so it's more smooth and comfortable transitions through magazines. Some of the other stuff I want to talk about and this is more on the selling slash buying standpoint is I see people trying to haggle prices and I personally haven't sold a blast in a very, very long time. I just haven't. Um, I just haven't really been into selling anything. I've been, you know, been building up my collection. But um, some people try and haggle the fact that say you can get this MP5 from China for $150, not on sale. Um, Zendu was doing a sale. Um, don't know when it will be end, but yeah, they, they had a current sale going on. So like all the M4, the new Gen 8 M4, the V2, MP5, and Scar were like $115 instead of $150, which was really really nice. But um, people would try and go, oh, I can get it, you know, for $150 in China, and say the seller's selling it for $200 or $220, which I I see as reasonable. I would that's a reasonable price because the seller already has it in Australia. And when I say that, even though you can successfully import them in, there is still running a risk where you can still have stuff seized. And I say that because I know that from experience, you know, filling out the paperwork and getting the B709A clearance. I'm um, just trying to think if that was the correct set of, uh, that's the correct release one. I believe it's the correct release one. Um, even though you get that, and you go through the right channels, sometimes these blasters can get mixed up and thrown in the wrong, in the, in the destroy bin, and they can be destroyed. So the whole idea that it's already in Australia, I don't mind paying a little bit more for the convenience of it, is a bit more respectful. You get those people that try and really hang it down, and they'll try and hang it down, and they're like, oh, I want to pay 130 And it's like, no. A lot of people now, if they list a blaster for sale, they will say, like, you know, they will physically say, this is what I expect. I'm not taking any less than this. Don't even try, you're wasting my time, you're wasting your time, it's ridiculous. It's about a bit of common respect, and you know, you might be buying a blaster and the dude's had five destroyed, even though the, the rules have changed, the laws have changed with importing them. So it's like, it's about a bit of respect, and you know, not trying to be a massive dick and undercut people, because like, some people will, they'll be like, oh, but you, you get it for like a 110. No, a lot of people don't get really good deals, um from like suppliers a majority of the time if they buy a couple of blasters they sometimes get stuff at a discounted price but not a lot of people do so it's about respect in both parties it's about you know 
not trying to undercut people and not trying to overcharge people. Obviously, if you know that it's a Gen 1 blaster, like if it's just a normal MP5, you know, list it as the normal MP5. Don't, you know, try and false hope people that it's the new uh, V2. But yeah, um, it's also like if you say you're going to come collect a blaster and you're interested in buying it and you make a date and a time and then you don't rock up and you don't say anything, that's a real dick move. Don't do that because the seller will alert, will actually notify other sellers that you've done stuff like that and people won't be open to buying to you. It's the same with if people like text you the day before, like literally like 10 minutes before you meant to meet at like say the shopping center or someone's house or something and they don't rock up and they're like, oh yeah, sorry, this came up. A bit of pre-warning, if you can give like maybe two, three hours, um, that's perfect. If you're still interested, you know, reschedule, but a lot of people generally, once they go, oh no, I can't come today, they don't want it, or they've basically found a cheaper price and they just completely, like, just don't want it, and it's really annoying and really frustrating. So it's about having a bit of respect for the seller and for the buyer, and obviously, you know, they come hand in hand. And that was kind of the last thing I want to say, guys, so I will get all my footage up on my phone and I'll do some editing. And hopefully in a week or so, and I might even wait until next week after I get all the footage from next week, so I can do like um, two sets or two different style uploads um, of my stuff, uh, of the uh, footage I've collected. But yeah, tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you want to see the UMP, because I am super keen for it. It has been ordered, it is shipped, it is on its way, so hopefully there's no issues and I get my MP5, uh, not my MP5, my UMP, sorry, 45, and I'm really excited for it. Um, if you got a comment, you know, don't be sure and happy to leave it in the comment section below. The only problem is my app is now crashing every time I get a notification of a comment. So if it's on an old video, it's incredibly hard for me to see that because I don't obviously look at my old videos that often. So if you leave a comment on this new video, I'll see it because I know it's for the new video. And if you've left a comment or commented something on an old video and I haven't answered it, Feel free to comment it on this video and I will try and I will get back to you because like obviously I'm checking my new, my latest videos each time now because it keeps on crashing every time I open it um, with the notification of someone's comment and then obviously like after I've made a bunch of videos I don't know which video it's on and because it's all on mobile it, it absolutely kills my dad to constantly stand there for like 20 minutes checking every um, video for comments. But yeah, don't forget to comment on this video, don't forget to like, subscribe if you're new here to the channel, I will have some gameplay footage up very shortly, and head over to my Instagram of Daggers and Darkness, if you've got any personal questions you'd like to ask, or just questions in general, don't forget to, you know, send me a question over there, message me, you know, DM me, because I can definitely respond to that 110% easier, and yeah, peace out guys, I'll catch you guys next time.